From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and welcome to this special exclusive presentation from the Cube. We're digging into Pensando and their Future Proof Your Enterprise event. To help kick things off, uh, welcoming in a uh, friend of the program, Scott Renovich. He is the principal uh, analyst at Futurum, coming to us from Montana. I believe first time we've had a guest uh, you know, on the program in the state of Montana. So, Scott, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Stu. Happy to be here. All right. So we're, we're going to dig a lot uh, in, into Pensando. Uh, they've got their announcement with Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Might help we give a, a little bit of background, and definitely I want Scott and I to talk a little bit about you know where things are in the industry, especially what's happening in networking, and how some of the startups are helping to impact what's happening on the market. Uh, so for for those that aren't familiar uh, with Pensando, uh, if you followed networking, I'm, I'm sure you are familiar with uh, the team that started them. So uh, uh, they are known, for those of us that watch the industry, as MPLS, which are four people, not to be confused with the protocol uh, MPLS, uh, but they had very successfully done multiple spin-ins for Cisco, uh, Andiamo, Nuovo, and NCME, which created fiber channel switches, the Cisco UCS, and the ACI product line, uh, so multiple generations of the Nexus. Uh, and Pensando is their company. Uh, they, they talk about future proof your enterprise is the proof point that they have today. Talking about the new edge, um, John Chambers, the former CEO uh, of Cisco, is the chairman of Pensando. Uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise is not only an investor, uh, but uh, also a customer, uh, an OEM uh, piece uh, of this solution. And, you know, so very interesting piece. And Scott, you know, I want, want to pull you into the discussion, you know. They're, they're the waves of technology, you know, I think the last, you know, 10, 15 years of networking, it, it, a lot of it has been, you know, can Cisco be disrupted? So software-defined networking was let's get away from hardware um, and, you know, drive towards more software. Uh, lots of things happening. So I, I'd love your commentary, just some of the macro trends you're seeing, you know, Cisco's position in the marketplace, how, how the startups are impacting them. Sure, Stu. Uh, I think uh, it's it's very exciting times right now in networking um, because we're uh, we're just at the point where uh, we have kind of had this long battle of software defined networking, like you said, you know, really pushed by the startups, and there's been a lot of skepticism along the way, uh, but you're you're starting to see some success, and um, the way I describe it is we're really on the third generation of software defined networking. You have the the first generation, which was really uh, one company, Nicira, which uh, VMware bought and turned into their successful NSX product, which is a, a, a virtualized networking solution, if you will. And then you had another uh, another round of startups, uh, people like Big Switch and Cumulus Networks, um, all of which were acquired in the last year. You know, Big Switch went to Arista and, and Cumulus. Um, just got purchased by, uh, you know, who were they purchased by, Stu? Purchased by NVIDIA, who, who <laughs> interestingly NVIDIA, enough, had just picked up Mellanox. So, uh, you know, Mellanox watch, watching, watching NVIDIA build out their stack. Sorry, I was having a senior moment. It happens <laughs> to us analysts. But, yeah, so NVIDIA is kind of rolling up these data center networking plays, um, which is interesting because NVIDIA is not a traditional uh, networking hardware vendor. It's a chip company. So uh, what you're seeing is kind of the, the, this vision of what they call the industry disaggregation, you know, having the different components, um, you, know, uh, you know, sold separately. And then, of course, Cisco announced the plan to roll out their own chip and, and sell that, you know, disaggregated from the network as well. So I think that's when Cisco did that. Uh, they acknowledged that, that this is successful, basically. They acknowledged that disaggregation is happening. Um, it, it's being, it was originally driven by the, the large public cloud providers like Microsoft, Azure, and Amazon, which started the whole disaggregation trend by, by acquiring different components and then uh, melding it all together with software. So it's definitely the future. And so uh, there's there's a lot of startups in this area to watch. You know, I'm watching many of them. They they include uh, uh, Arcus, 
um, which is an exciting new routing vendor, uh, DriveNets, which is another virtualized routing vendor. This company, Alkira, which is gonna gonna do routing uh, fully in the cloud, multi-cloud uh, networking. Uh, Aviatrix, which is doing uh, multi-cloud networking. You know, all these are basically uh, software or software companies, and not you know they're not pitching hardware as as part of their their value add or, or their integrated package, if you will. So it's a different business model and it's going to be super interesting to watch because I think the third generation is the one that's really going to break this all apart. Yeah, it, it, you brought up a lot of really interesting points there, there, Scott. Uh, that that disaggregation and some of the changing landscape. Uh, of course, that that more than billion dollar acquisition of Nicira by VMware uh, caused a lot of tension between uh, VMware and Cisco. Uh, interesting, I think back to when Cisco created the UCS platform, it created a ripple effect uh, in in the networking world. Also, uh, HP was a huge partner of Cisco's before UCS launched and not long after UCS launched, uh, HP stopped selling Cisco gear. They got heavier into the networking component. And then here, many years later, we see, you know, who does the MPLS team partner with when they're no longer part of Cisco and Chambers is, you know, no, no longer the CEO? Well, it's HPE front and center uh, there. You're going to see John Chambers at uh, HPE Discover. So, you know, there was a long relationship and change. And from the chip companies, you know, Intel, uh, of course, has built a, you know, a sizable networking business. We, we talked a bit about Mellanox and the acquisitions they've done. Um, one you didn't mention, but you know, caused a huge impact in the industry and something that Penn Sonder was responding to is Amazon bought Annapurna Labs. And Annapurna Labs, a small Israeli company and really driving um, a lot of the you know, innovation when it comes to c compute and networking uh, at Amazon, uh, the Graviton uh, you know, com compute and Nitro is what powers uh, their their outpost solutions. So, uh, you know, if you, if you look at Amazon, you, you know, they, they buy lots of pieces. They, uh, it, it's that mixture of hardware and software. Um, you know, there, there was, uh, in early days, people thought that they just bought kind of off the shelf white boxes and, and uh, did it cheap. But really, uh, we, we see Amazon really hyper optimizes what they're doing. Um, so, you know, Scott, I, let's talk a little bit about Pensando if we can. Uh, Amazon with the, 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 the Nitro Solutions built Outpost, which is their hybrid solution. So the, the same stack that they put in Amazon, uh, they can now put in customer's data center. What Pensando's positioning is, well, other cloud providers in enterprise, rather than having to buy something from Amazon, we're going to enable that. So, you know, what do you think about what you've seen and heard from, from uh, Pensando? And, you know, what, what's that need in the market uh, for, for these type of solutions? Yes. Okay. So, uh, I'm glad you brought up Outpost because I should have uh, mentioned this, this next trend. We have the, uh, the if you will, the, the disaggregated open software-based networking. Uh, which is going on? It started in the in the public cloud, uh, but then you have another trend taking hold, which is the so-called edge of the network, which is going to be driven by the emergence of of five G and uh, technology called CBRS and 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 uh, you know different wireless technologies um, that are emerging at the so-called edge of the network. And the purpose of the edge, remember, is to get uh, closer to the customer, get the, get larger bandwidth and compute and storage closer to the customer. And uh, there's a lot of people excited about this, including the public cloud providers. You know, Amazon's building out their outposts. Uh, Microsoft has an edge stack, uh, the Azure edge stack that they've built. They've acquired a couple companies for a billion dollars. They acquired Metaswitch. They acquired Affirm Networks. Um, and uh, so all these public cloud providers are are pushing their cloud out to the edge with this infrastructure, a combination of, of software and hardware. And that's the opportunity that Pensando is going after, you know, with, with this Outposts uh, theme. And um, it's it's very interesting, Stu, because it, it, it the, the co-opetition is very tenuous. A lot of players are trying to occupy this edge. If you think about uh, what Amazon did with public cloud, they sucked up all of this IT uh, compute power and services applications and everything moved from these enterprise private clouds 
to the public cloud and, and Amazon's market cap exploded, right? Because they were basically sucking up all the the money for IT, uh, you know, spending. So now if this moves to the edge, we have this arms race of people that want to be on the edge, whether that takes the play, uh, the way to visualize it is a mini cloud, whether this mini cloud is uh, at the edge of Costco. So that when you, when Stu's shopping at Costco, there's AI that follows you in the store and knows everything you're going to do and predicts you're going to buy, you know, this cereal and we're going to give you a deal today. Here's a coupon, you know, this kind of uh, big brotherish AI tracking thing, which is happening, whether you like it or not, or autonomous vehicles that need to connect to the edge and uh, have self-driving and have very low latency services very close to them, whether that's on the edge of the highway or, or wherever you're going in the car, you, you might not um, have time to go back to the public cloud to get the data. So it's about pushing these compute and data services closer to the customers at the edge and having very low latency and having lots of resources there, compute, storage, and networking. And, and that's the opportunity that Pensando is going after. And of course, HPE is going after that too. And HPE, as we know, is competing with its other big uh mega competitors, you know, primarily Dell, v, the Dell VMware combo and the Cisco, uh, uh, the Cisco, you know, machine. So it's uh, at the same time, the service providers are interested in this as well. And they have, by the way, they have infrastructure, they have central offices, you know, all over the world. So they, they are thinking that can be an edge. And you have the data center people, the Equinixes of the world who also own real estate and data centers that are closer to the customers in the metro areas. So you really have this uh, very interesting dynamic of, of all these big players going after this opportunity, uh, putting in money, uh, resources, and, and trying to acquire the right technology. Pensando is, is right in the middle of this. They're going after this opportunity, you know, using the, the P4 networking language and a specialized ASIC and a NIC that they think is going to accelerate processing and networking at the edge. Yeah, uh, you know, they, you've laid out a lot of really good pieces there, Scott. As, as you said, the, the first incarnation of this, it's a NIC. And, you know, boy, you know, I, I think back to, you know, years ago, it's like, well, we, we tried to make the NIC, you know, really simple, or do we build intelligence in it? How much, you know, the hardware versus software uh, discussion. Um, what I found interesting is if you look at this team, you know, they were really good at the end of the day, they made a chip. It was a, you know, it's, it's a switch, it's an ASIC, it became compute. Uh, and if you look at the technology available now, uh, they're building a lot of your networking just in a really small form factor. You talked about P4, it's, you know, highly programmable. Uh, so, you know, the theme of, you know, future proof your enterprise with anything you say, ah, you know, what is it? It's a piece of hardware. Well, it's highly programmable. So today they position it for security, telemetry, observability. But if there's other services that I need to get to the edge, so you know, you, you laid out really well a couple of those edge use cases. And if something comes up and I need that in the future, well, just like we've been talking about for years with software-defined networking and network function virtualization, I don't want a dedicated appliance. It's going to be in software and a form factor like Pensando does, I can put that in lots of places. They're positioning they have a cloud business, which they sell direct and expect to have uh, a couple of uh, the cloud providers using this solution uh, here in 2020. And then the enterprise business and, you know, obviously a, a huge opportunity uh, with HPE's position in the marketplace to take that to uh, a broad customer base. So interesting opportunities, so many different pieces, you know, flexibility of software, you know, as you late Scott, it's, it's, it's a complicated coopetition uh, out there. Um, so I guess, you know, what would you want to see uh, for, from the market and, you know, what is success uh, from Pensando and HPE uh, if they, you know, make this generally available this month, it's available on ProLiance, it's available on GreenLake. Um, what would you want to be hearing from customers or from the market for you to say further down the road that this has been highly successful? Well, I want to see that it works and I want to see that people are buying it. So, you know, it's not that complicated. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I'm being a little, you know, uh, superficial there, but um, 
it, it, it's, you know, it's hard sometimes to look in these technologies. They're very sophisticated. And, and sometimes it comes down to whether they, they perform, you know, they deliver on the expectation. But I think there are also questions about the edge, um, you know, the, the pace of investment. Uh, we're, we're obviously in a, in a recession and we're in a, um, you know, a, a very strange environment with the pandemic, which has accelerated spending in some areas, but also throttled back spending in other areas. And 5G is one of the areas that it appears to have been throttled back a little bit. This big explosion of, of technology at the edge. Nobody's quite sure, you know, how it's going to play out, when it's going to play out. Also, you know, who's going to buy this stuff? You know, um, personally, I think it's going to be big enterprises. It's going gonna, it's gonna, to uh, start with like the, the, the big box retailers, the Walmarts, the Costcos. Um, uh, of the world, uh, who, who, by the way, you know, Walmart's in a big competition with Amazon. And uh, I think one of the, the news items you've seen in the pandemic is all these uh, online digital e-commerce sales have, have skyrocketed, obviously, because people are staying at home more. Uh, they need that intelligence at the edge. They need that, uh, that infrastructure. And one of the things that I've, I've heard is um, the thing that's held it back uh, so far is the price. It, it, they don't know uh, how much it's going to cost. So we actually ran a, a survey recently targeting enterprises buying 5G, and that was one of the number one concerns, like how much does this infrastructure cost? So I don't actually know how much Pensando costs, but they're going to have to deliver the right ROI. Like if it's a, if it's a very you know expensive proprietary NIC, uh, you know, who pays for that and does it deliver the ROI that they need? Uh, you know, um, so we're going to have to see that in the marketplace. And, and by the way, you know, Cisco is going to have the same challenge and, and, and Dell is going to have the same challenge. Uh, they're all they're all racing to supply this uh, this edge stack, if you will, packaged with hardware. But it's going to come down to, you know, how is it priced? What's the ROI? And, and are these customers going to justify the investment is, is the trick. A absolutely, Scott. Really good points there, too. Uh, of course, the, the HPE announcement, uh, big move for Pensando, doesn't mean that they can't work with the other server vendors. Uh, they, they absolutely are talking to all of them. Uh, and, and we will see if there are alternatives to Pensando that come up or if they end up signing them. All right, so uh, what we have here is I, I've actually got uh, quite a few interviews uh, with the Pensando team, uh, starting with, I, I, I talked about MPLS. Uh, we have uh, Prem, uh, Jane, and Sony Giandani, who are the P and the S in MPLS as part of it, uh, both co-founders. Prem is the CEO. Um, we, we have uh, Silvano Guy, who uh, if anybody that followed this group, you know, writes the book on it. If you've watched all the way this part, far and want to learn even more about it, I actually have a few copies of Silvano's book. So if you reach out to me, uh, easiest ways on Twitter, just hit me up at at Stu. Uh, I've got a few copies of uh, the, the book about Pensando, which you can go through all those details about how it works, the programmability, what changes and everything like that. So. Um, we've also, of course, got Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Uh, and while we don't have any customers for this segment, uh, Scott mentioned many of the retail ones. Goldman Sachs uh, is the, kind of the marquee early customer. So uh, did talk uh, with, with them. I have Randy Pond, who's the CFO, uh, talking about uh, they, they've actually seen an increase uh, beyond what they expected at this point of being uh, out of stealth, uh, only a little over six months, even more, um, which is important considering that you know it's tough times for many startups coming out uh, uh, in the middle of a pandemic. So uh, watch those interviews. Please hit us up with any other questions. Uh, Scott Rainovich, thank you so much for joining us uh, to, to help uh, talk about the industry and uh, this Pensando uh, partnership extending with HPE. Thanks, Stu. Always a pleasure to join the CUBE team. All right, check out thecube.net for all uh, the upcoming, as well as if you just search Pensando on there, you can see everything we had uh, on there. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.